Welcome to the Blitz. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's week eight. <laughs> yeah, and he's Joey Lamar. I'm Matthew Doyle. Plenty of great games this week with teams battling to reach the top of their region, but I don't think there's a better one than Lee County hosting Colquitt County. Definitely wasn't a better matchup this week than Lee County versus Colquitt, and we spoke with both coaches ahead of the game about this matchup. Last year, I don't know if we really realized how hard you have to play every single week in this region, and you have to get it. You have to, you know, completely refocus yourself and uh, get up for another huge game. And uh, that's something we learned last year, and you know, we learned it in a hard way playing that second game versus Colton County. In Lee County, I think it's probably the up and coming uh, program. Uh, I, I just think our region is as balanced and as tough as the SEC West. Game two at Lee County, I don't think it's any tougher than that. It can't. Trojans looking to upset the number one ranked team in the state, and it's our harvest game of the week. They waste little time making their statement. First play of the game for Lee County going deep. Gerald Morrell hits Trey Efer, an 80-yard touchdown pass. Trojans up 7 to nothing, setting the tone early. Colford trying to respond. Chase Perry to the end zone, but Andre Jones breaks up the pass, and the Packers have to settle for a field goal. 7-3 Trojans. Later in the first, Cole quit after adding another field goal, going to make it. 7-6, Paris hits Ty Lee, keeps his feet, and he's headed down the sideline, diving into the end zone for the touchdown. Two-point conversion, no good, however. But the Packers would open this one up in the second half, which is also, also where things got a little heated. A Colquitt assistant coach was ejected. Stay connected to Fox 31 Sports for more updates. The score is currently 54-17 in the fourth quarter. And let's head down the street to Hugh Mills Stadium. Albany received the ball first. And on the opening play is picked off by a Zonde Austin. Thomas County Central with a short field off the turnover. Second play of the game and first after the turnover, Ernest McCormick off tackle, 40 yards into the end zone, 7 to nothing. Yellow Jackets. We're only a minute into this contest. And after the Albany punt, Nick passing straight up the gut. He's headed one direction and nobody can drag him down. Nobody, nobody. Well, until actually you crossed the goal line right there. 14 to nothing, TCC. Start of second quarter, still 14 zip. Calias Williams keeps it and is going into the end zone. Thomas County Central all over the hometown Indians. 14, 48 to 14, your final. Albany still searching for their first win of the season. Chris County started their subregion play with a win last week, but tonight they had a tough task against Cairo, a team that they haven't scored a point against in three of the last four seasons. And let's see if they could get on the board tonight. Against Cairo, opening drive for Chris, Jamie Robinson on the quarterback heap, gets down inside the Cairo five-yard line. First and goal, Chris, and a couple plays later, snap to Patrick Fellon, he powers into the end zone. 7-0, Chris. Ensuing drive for Cairo, John Owens, back to pass, hits Walter Grant for a big completion to the Chris 20-yard line. First down, Cairo. Now first and goal, Cairo. Morris Edward with the carry, goes in untouched for the touchdown score, tied at seven. Next drive for Cairo, Edward on the carry again for eight yards. That gives him a first down in Chris territory. And on third and one for Cairo, Edward again on the pitch to the right. Rambles 30 yards for the touchdown, two-point conversion, 15-7 Cairo. Final is 29-18 Cairo. And Terrell Academy Eagles looking for their first win over Brookwood in 15 years, hosting the Warriors and not the start the Eagles were hoping for. Cale Deese with the beautiful play-action pass over the top to Judd Jones. Esther Point no good, Brookwood up 6-0. Coach Murdoch hoping to order up a response, but the Eagles offense finding no room to operate. The Warriors winning the battle in the trench nearly Clements every play, and Cameron here. Clements stuffed behind the line. Second quarter now, Brookwood opens it up. Jet sweep to Alfonso Spencer, and he's taking it to the house. Untouched, eight, 80 yards for the score. Point after no good, Warriors lead 12-0. Next possession, Deese going back to the air on play action, and he's finding Bradley Jones at the other end. 75-yard touchdown pass. Warriors take 19-0 lead at that point. They go on to win 26-13 over Terrell Academy. And don't go anywhere. We'll reveal our team of the week and take a look at what teams do on their bye weeks after the break.
welcome back to the Blitz. Since opening up their season with two losses, Worth County has completely switched it around by winning three straight games, and that is why the Rams are our team of the week for week eight. Worth County started sub-region play last week with a 49-0 win over Doherty, which marked the second time in their last three games that the Rams' defense has shut out their opponents. Worth County's first two touchdowns last week came off of special teams plays, demonstrating the team's philosophy that winning comes from every part of the team. They're buying into the team philosophy. You know, the defense is picking up the offense. Um, the offense is picking up the defense. Uh, you know, we preach that, you know, if, if we let them go down and score, then the offense has got to answer. It's time for the offense to pick up the defense. And when we turn the ball over or punt, now it's time for the defense to pick up the offense. Things of that nature is what we try to preach. And let's take a look at how they did tonight. Start of the third quarter, though, 21-0. to Bambridge not looking good for Worth, but on their opening drive of the second half, Justin Hope, with a run of 15 yards, sets up first down in Bainbridge territory. And worth driving, Dontavious Buford with the sweep run to the left, gets the corner and goes for 25 yards, 21-7 Bainbridge. Next drive for Bainbridge, Brett McLaughlin back to pass, but is picked off by Eric Burroughs, scrambles around before finally being brought down. First down, Worth in Bainbridge territory. And a couple of plays later, drove Jerome Williams back to pass, finds David Little, 10-yard touchdown pass, 21-14, Bainbridge, and on their next drive, Caleb Boutwell up the middle, cuts to the left, goes all the way to the Worth 24-yard line before being brought down for a first down, and a few plays later, Boutwell on the carry, up the middle for the one-yard touchdown, 28-14, Bainbridge at that point, 30-14 is your final. And the Calhoun County Cooters were looking to, for their first win against Randolph Clay tonight on senior night. First drive, Devontae Williams gets the handoff up the middle and makes the man pay as he rumbles for a first down. Cooters in the red zone. Williams gets it again, but he fumbles the football, and the Cooters recover the ball. And on the next play, Calhoun is attacking on the same side, but for the same result. The quarterback fumbles in the red zone, and the Devils capitalize as they return it for a touchdown just before the half. Huge momentum shift in this game as the Cooters were near their end zone, but Randolph Clay walks away with the score. Cooter ball later on. Anthony Johnson gets the handoff and showcases his speed. Gets to the outside, and it sets up a Calhoun first down. And in the final attempts to score before the half, the Cooters throw it deep, and it is nearly intercepted. The half ended 16-0, and we do not have a score in that game right now. Stay tuned with us for more. Coffin County has arguably one, been one of the most impressive teams in Region 3-5A. The Trojans come in 5-1 while posting three shutouts. And maybe the only team close to Coffee is their opponent tonight, the undefeated South Effingham Mustangs. Coffee Trojans looking to hand South Effingham their first loss of the season, first quarter. No score, Coffee's opening drive, Tyrone Brewington weaves his way outside and drags a defender with him into the end zone for the touchdown. And in response to the touchdowns, the Mustangs will open their drive and a field goal attempt will be blocked by the Trojans, so it's still 7-0 coffee. Second quarter, same score. Tyrone Brunton again up the middle, fights his way in for the score. He's a nominee for Player of the Week, 14-0 Trojans. Late in the second quarter, Mustangs driving. Kareem Taylor takes the snap and dives into the end zone, score 14-7 at the half. Late third quarter, still 14-7 to him. Max Hughes throws it up. Long pass to Trey Bryant, who outruns the defense for coffee and scores. Trojans up 21-7. In the end, the Trojans hand South Effingham their first loss of the season, 34-22. Captains at midfield for the coin toss to Mitchell County and Bakington. Bakington will win the coin toss, and they elected to receive. The opening kick, Mitchell bobbles it, but eventually, Stedman Hicks will be gang-tackled by a group of Blazers. He will be brought down, but the good news is Mitchell County still retained possession. So we stay on the first, same drive. Mitchell County going to the air, but the pass will fall incomplete just over the outstretched arms of the receiver. And the Blazer Trillies are trying to inspire their defense, but it will really be to no avail as the Eagles would score a touchdown. And this is the point after attempt. As it's good, Mitchell up 70-0 after the May PAT. Mitchell County goes on to win 42-0. They start the region undefeated. And coaches all around Southwest Georgia are always looking for ways to excite their players. 
but more importantly, a way to keep them fresh. And Fox 31 Sports profiles two programs that attempt to keep their team fresh by deviating from their normal practice schedule. This season, Tiff County and Monroe decided to try something different. Instead of having Thursday afternoon practice, they opted for Thursday morning, but only if the players committed. That we had to have 100% participation, from, especially from our starters. The Blue Devils experienced the same success. We haven't had a guy late uh, for, for a 6.30 practice yet. But what did a player think about the idea? Uh, I was all shy, like, what? I, I never heard of it. And so, but when I finally came out here, it wasn't it went too bad. Both coaches cited extra hydration and rest as primary reasons this model works, but didn't leave out additional reasons. Let's be able to be out of football until the next morning, um, next day on Friday afternoon. So it gives the, uh, uh, the junior varsity guys time to get ready and play, for, uh, play a game on Thursday afternoon. And the results appear Friday night. Tiff County won their first five games, and Monroe won two of its first three contests. The time off provides both head coaches with opportunities to spend more time with their families, which could result in more work. There's enough time, to, I guess, for me to go home and do stuff around the house. And other times, they're asked to perform another task. Yeah, dad, dad and sometimes she wants me to leave. And maybe with the success of both programs, most coaches will give this approach a try. Don't go anywhere because still to come, we have a lot of blitz left, including Thomasville traveling to Pelham and my favorite part of the show, our fan of the week. Stick around. Welcome back to the Blitz. Pelham entered tonight trying to end their two-game losing streak, but there was another streak that the Hornets were looking to snap. Pelham is 0-20 all-time against the Thomasville Bulldogs, and the band was rocking out at halftime at Hornets Stadium. In start of the third, Pelham gives it to Kobe Russell. He is going to make some cuts before finally being brought down on a shoestring tackle. Look at that move right there, and there is the tackle. Brings him down, first down though. Pelham looking to go deep on the next play, and he nearly comes up with the ball just incomplete. It falls incomplete, and cheerleaders try and get their Pelham fans pumped up, and later in the third, snap goes just over the quarterback's head. The fumble gets bounced around all over the place. He can't pick it up. Thomasville eventually falls on the loose ball, and they are set up in great field position, and that is just what they needed. Near the goal line, Torrey Sapp takes the handoff, speeds around the quarter, into the end zone, 20 to 6, Pelham at that point, and they win their first ever game over Townsville, 20 to 13. Just over pages into Thursday's contest in an unfamiliar situation, looking for their first win of the season. And with a short week because of a Thursday night game, their task became even more difficult. The captains met at midfield for the coin toss in this one, and on the opening drive for Westover, Emory McKenzie off the right side. He's going to see the Fox 31 camera. He's going to stop by to say hello. Hello, Emory. How are you doing? Oh, you have a game to play? Don't worry, we'll catch up later. Now, Sumter's response, and they don't have much going either. Kayshawn Sheed drops the quarterback for a loss, and now Westover with the ball again, and McKenzie off the right side. He has a chance to go out of bounds, but look at his toughness. He's going to stay in bounds. The senior is going to fight for extra yards and his first win of the season, hopefully. And later in the drive for Westover, McKenzie again on the keeper. Straight up the gut, Westover up 7 to nothing. In the first, Sumter trying to respond to Westover's touchdown, but the defense for the Trojans was just too much tonight. They forced the fumble and recover. Antoine Williams, the beneficiary, and off the turnover in the second quarter. Quandez Carter puts the Patriots up 14 to nothing. They go on to roll in this contest 26 to 7. Octavia Jones and the boys pick up their first win of the season. And Westwood looking for their fifth win of the season. Second quarter, Val went up 7 to nothing and looking for more. Passing on first down is complete to Tyler Franks for a short game. And on the next play, this time they're going to go to Franks again, but they're going to hand it off, and he's met by Kevin Hall, and he is dropped for a two-yard loss. And on third down, the Valiants go back to the air. Jacob Parker completes the pass to Chris Ritterbush, and he makes a couple of defenders miss, and Valwood moves the chains on a third and long, a third and 11 to be exact. Now first down for Valiants. They got two 
happy with the pass, and Tyler Lowe steps in front of it and takes it to the house. But Val Wood will go on to win this game 34 to 12. The Valiants move to 6 and 0 on the season and remain undefeated in the region. For Westwood, they fall to 5 and 5, five to 500 on the season and 4 and 4 and 4 and 4 overall and 2 and 2 in the region. And of course, with all the great action going on tonight, we had to recognize the best of the best from the stands. And here are the nominees for the Albany Technical College Fan of the Week, Fallon Williams and his daughter, hoping for an upset at Hugh Mills, and the fans from Coffee out in full support for breast cancer awareness, rocking the pink and the paint. And finally, the parents for Calhoun County, they were supporting their seniors on senior night. Be sure to go online and vote for your favorite fans. And we are not done recognizing the best of the best from this week. We'll reveal our top play and player of the week nominees after the break. Welcome back to the Blitz. We've gone through the tapes and I think we have found our Terrell C play of the week. It comes from Coffee and South Effingham. And watch this bomb from Marcus Wheaton. Sorry for the tough name. He's going to go 80 yards for the score as Coffee upsets South Effingham tonight. And while we're at it, let's reveal our nominees for the Colquitt Regional Medical Center Player of the Week. Chase Parrish had a touchdown pass in the early going and also had a 53-yard touchdown run as Colquitt County is blowing Lee County away at home. And then in Coffee County, Taiwan, Taiwan Bruton had two touchdowns for the Trojans against South Effingham. And finally, from Cairo and Chris County, Morris Edward had two touchdowns in the early going. Go online and vote for your favorite player. And that's all for this week, but let's look at the games going on next week. Cook is traveling to Applin County, and Thomasville will hit the road to face Berrien, and Lee County will look to pick up a win as they travel to the Lowndes, and Albany will be taking on Monroe on Thursday at Hugh Mills Stadium. Bainbridge and Doherty will also be playing at Hugh Mills Stadium on Friday, while Terrell Academy will travel to Valwood, and Southland will face Westwood, and Tiftary Academy will host a tough Brookwood squad, and Early County will face Pelham. Bainton Charter will be playing on Thursday against Terrell County and Mitchell County will face Miller County. Turner County will travel far to face a tough Clinch County team and Irwin County will travel to Lanyard County. And those are all good games. Uh, let's look at now at our Harvey's Game of the Week preview. And we have Valdosta and Colquitt County, Camden County at Tip County, so two 6A matchups there. Westover is going to travel to Worth County. And Brooks County at Fitzgerald. Matt, which game are you looking forward to most? No, I gotta go with Valdosta taking on Colton County. That's one of the greatest rivalries, and we'll see if Valdosta can be the one to get that loss to Colton County that we haven't seen in now 22 games. All right, I'm looking for Brooks and Fitzgerald. Brooks has gone to the state semifinals each of the past two years, and if they want to go back, they have to beat Fitzgerald. Well, thanks for joining us. That's all we have time for. Have a great weekend.